This your boy RBG God Killer, and I'm doing a video to do like my thoughts on. Basically, I'm gonna show you my collection and just give you my thoughts what I was thinking when I was gonna, what I was thinking when I was buying, what I was buying, and what I was doing what I'm doing. Uh, I'm gonna start the video off with things that's not you Gil, then get into your Gil. Um, first thing first, I know a lot of people been talking about this, but this was like the last day to buy this Mario 3D All Stars. Like mine's gonna be sealed forever until I got my camera off. Mine's gonna be sealed forever. And what it is, I'm just gonna let it stay sealed. Um, whenever time and then resell it somewhere 20, 10, 20, 30 years down the line. So yeah, it was your last day to get this like physical copy. And the digital copy actually goes off the market too for Nintendo. So it that'd be the best thing if you're trying to like buy something to hold on to it and be worth some value. <clears throat> that's be one on because Nintendo what Nintendo going to do like they always do with each la every last one on they're going to sell it to you like this and they're going to resell it but they're going to sell this game for $20 this game for $20 and this game for $20 Nintendo always does that so and that's what like my thoughts was um I know if you watched it what I've been watching I always talk about Digimon uh I can't get none of nothing in but I had all of these packs and these packs I paid $10 a piece for them which is way over value but I'm never going to open these packs. I was, but I, like, I can't open them. So I w I'm not going to open these packs. And I actually got some boxes that never still haven't came in yet. So I'm trying to see what's going to happen. Are they going to give me some boxes when they get them? Or are they going to um, uh, basically put my money towards credit for more boxes? Um, next thing, Digimon again. Um, I have actually have two of these, two of these, two of these. But uh, yeah, these starter decks are very expensive. You're looking at at least twenty dollars. I think this one twenty dollars. This one is the most expensive one. I think it's forty dollars, sometimes fifty dollars, and this one is thirty dollars to forty dollars at times. So yeah, Digimon is very expensive. And the next expensive thing with Digimon, you also get a Digimon sleeve, which is very expensive too. And I think that is it dealing with everything's not related to Yu Gi Oh. Alright, let me show you my thought process on what I've been doing. This is something that you probably could do now if you can find it. Um, these right here, Battle City Boxes, I have four of these. And they seal that I'm going to open one of them. You know, I'm going to open one of them on, on camera and I'm going to tell you what's, what's going on. What happened on the secondary market, these going for almost $50. So I can easily resell everything I have. But it is hard, it's hard to get the secret rails out of here. And I actually have a cart where I got something I'm buying, but I may not buy. So what it is, it's the secret rare cards that's hard to pull. So I need to see what I'm getting. Cause the main, the main three monsters that's in here that's expensive is Paladin, Blue Blue Eyes, and Dark Magician. So if I pull one, either one of them, I can take it out of my cart before I start to buy it later on tonight. So let's see what I get. I know you get the original God cards. Which I'm gonna give away. I see a blue. I got a Buster Blader. Nice. Blue eyes. Nice. I need a Dark Magician. A Breaker. Nice. They worth money too. Reinforcement of Truth. And. Lost Wing. Okay. There's two cards I need to buy. That's Novaman Cross Out. And I also need to buy. Not Novaman Cross Out. Cross Out. Yeah, Novaman Cross Out. And I need to buy. Um. I also need to buy. Well, Dark Paladin, Dark Paladin, Dark Magician, and No Man Cross. So, yeah, I'm gonna need to buy right now. So I got everything else. So yeah, if you buy that and just keep it sealed, that'll be worth money. Like uh, this right here, the Battle City box that just came out a couple months ago. I still had this whole display box sealed, and now the display box is running at $110. By the end of the year, they probably be $300. So I probably sell it by the end of the year or a couple of years from now. See the price on it, cause that's expensive. Um. Let's see what we're going with next. I have all the starter deck for Speed Duel. Every last one of them, the first two. Last time I checked, this was running at 40. This one was 30. This one, these kind of been running the same because they are fairly new. But these these two are the very first two that came out for Speed Duel. And I also got a Speed Duel Destiny Draw Super Rare that came out for Yu-Gi-Oh! Day. And like, one, it's a rare copy. So, and that, this car actually came all the way from Hawaii. So, that's like my thought process on that. And let me see. What's next? And I now I keep booster. Okay, collector 10. That I I now have this collector 10 is going up in price because Dragoon. And I do still have my one Dragoon copy. And I think it's almost $80 now. 
I've been holding on to it. And these tens are going up in price. So if you see one of these or the 2019, I'll uh, buy it because they only work 20, they $20 MSRP. But like secondary market, easy resale for like, I think, how much are they? $50 now? They're expensive now. Um, Now I actually have two of these I haven't opened. That's legendary Duelist Rage of Rock. I see people trying to pull the Ghost Rare. And I, now I think these are $80 and they was cheap. When I mean, when they were like $45. When I got like all the mines in. So I actually have two more of these. I can easily resell them for a good profit. And I think that's all like the big bulk products. Alright. Now let me explain what's going on. Um, I think Yu-Gi-Oh! is now heading into the Pokemon world. To where everybody's starting to pull the old first sets. Old first cards. So if you find a way to get like older cards. You will be in the green. And I'm going to show you something I, I got. There's a set called Master Collection. Like the first bottom that kind of came out for Yu-Gi-Oh. And had all these cards in it. It had uh, Exodia. XCV. That will be the, the, the mark number. MC1001. And I got Dark Ruler. really Hades. So they, no, they can't say it in English. So that came from the Master Collection. I have every card. Um, this actually was a good look for me. I actually bought this card from the actual seller, Relinquish, but he took so long, he threw this one in for free. So I actually bought both of them. I had I actually got both of them, so I had to, didn't have to buy this one separate. That was a good look on that guy. I gave him a good rating and review. That was a good look. Um, Dark Necrofear. All these cards are actually, no, this is not the right one. I got the wrong one. I pulled the wrong one to show y'all. Basically, it's a card like this. Um, it's probably up here with the rest of my cards. So I can't find it right now. Basically, it's a card I did come from the Master Collection. It's another one just like this one. And I have like five of these Barrel Dragon because most of all these cards are in the anime and they're anime known. So what happened is they're gonna be in value and price because the Master Collection itself. For I only see one listing for it, and it's eight hundred dollars for the master collection. Um, my thought process for this was come from something called Battle Pack. I mean Retro Pack. Everything in Retro Pack is expensive. This is the the cheapest thing in it, and it's only five dollars. So you know, over time things go up in value, but it's gonna be hard. But that was my thought process. Um, Dark Piercing Light. This come from some called a McDonald's pack. McDonald's had a few cards that came out when we when Yu-Gi-Oh first started from the, in the Happy Meals, and this was one of them, and it was a secret rare. And you have a few of them that goes up like eighty some dollars. I got this at a basically half the price because the shop I went to they do mark they do um market price versus actual listing seller. I like that. So I only got this for maybe five dollars, but I can resell it for eighteen. I think that's the actual listing price. So came up. And this a regular common card. Frog of the jam. I got it for basically basically half off. I can resell it for its known price. And I got this this one. This is called Invader of Darkness. Come from Invasion of Chaos ILC. One of the, I would say one of the best Yu-Gi-Oh sets that came out. And okay, in the Dual Monster era, cause I I think I break Yu-Gi-Oh down into three eras. I would say the Gold Rush for cards you're looking for is from the Dual Monster era. That's the original Yu-Gi-Oh era. Then you have what I call the Silver era, which is the GX era, and then you have the Bronze era, which is the 5D era. And I'm gonna say there's the the other, the next era would be what you would call the number hunt, number hunter era from um, Zexo. We try to collect all the numbers, all the XC numbers. And I got this from Shonen Jump Unity. Kind of got a half off too. Now let me show you all my mistake in buying cards. You have to be very careful. Um, this also, this also come from the McDonald's pack. I wasn't looking very good, but. Let me show you why I messed up it. Not inspecting well. It looks good, but actually there's a scratch there that I did not see at first. And then I really didn't turn it over and realize that this was dent and I had a crease in there somewhere. So that kind of kills it value. It kind of does. And it has a crinkle here. So if I would get this thing graded, there you go. You probably see that. I see it. That that right there. Even if I would try to get this graded, it was not. It would not get a good grade. 
that right there alone will kill it. So let me show you my other mistake. Now this comes from Evasion of Chaos 2, first edition. It's hard to find cars like this. From the I only inspected the front. And I was saying to myself, man, this car is impeccable. It looked good. You don't really see no scratches on it. Nothing for real. Not like near mint. I didn't really check the back. And then I noticed the scratch there. Let me get it focused. Uh, okay. You know, it's a dent up in the top left side right there. And then another crease right there. You see it? All oh, that kills the value. That make a dent. So that, that was my mistake. Those were my mistakes. All right, let me show you why everything I picked up today, show you where my mind was going. This right here was worth, it's worth some money. It's just an ultimate rare. I finally got some different rare, rarity too. I finally got an ultimate rare. This is an ultimate rare. And it's like 20 some dollars. And it come from a very, it come from the dual monster era. And it's first edition. This is when they were first printed ultimate rares. The ultimate rares now today don't look like these ultimate rares. They kind of eat all the rails to me kind of ugly. Didn't mention Invader, first edition. Look kind of good. Painful Choice, first edition. Magic Ruler, don't say spell card, magic card. Worth money. That that magic card and first edition, and it came from Magic Ruler, and the reprint was Spell Ruler. That's when they started changing all the cards to spell cards. Worth money. That alone worth money in time. Another first edition, magic card, and that comes from Pharaoh Servant, PSV, first edition. I normally don't buy unlimited cards because they don't have the same value. But I only, Giant True Nate is a banned card and it comes from the Dual Monster Era. It's a magic card. But the only reason why I got a magic un, and it's unlimited because it's a magic card and it comes from Magic Ruler, not Spare Ruler. It's not a reprint. I mean, it's a reprint from the original, but it's not a reprint reprint because you have two, you have a Spare Ruler reprint that happened in 20, 2027, 2017, about 2017. So that, and I got a Dark Hole, but this Dark Hole is from the very first Yu-Gi-Oh! set ever come out, L.O.B. Lit, um, Legend of Blue Eyes, White Dragon. That's why I got that. And this right here come from a limited edition from um, Rage and Battle. Worth a lot of money. Worth some money. This is a Numbers Ultimate Rare. And it come from a Zexo 10 limited edition. It worth a little money because it's, it's an Ultimate Rare. This Kuribu is a limited edition. I can't remember what FL, FL come from. Flaming something. Oh, Flaming Eternity. No, Flaming something. I can't remember what said it. It's a special card. Special edition. That's why I got it. Insect Queen come from the Collector's 10 from 20, 2004, 2003, 2005, or 6. Somewhere up in there. It's basically the old. It's one of the first few collect, collect first few cards and from a Collector's 10. That's the only way you're going to get this card. And Collector's 10. This card came from a Collector's 10. Same, same principle. Over time. It's one of the very first few cards to collect the 10. Um, I got this one because it's a gold rare from um prim premium gold, like the original gold rares. That's why I got it. And they're not going to print none of that anymore like that. Because you all seen the new gold rares, the new maximum golds, the new gold cards look like, like this. Dark Magician. All right. Um, Hanzo. It's from Collects 10 too. I try to collect, try to get all the Collects 10 from the old card back in the days. Um, Neo Weed Man, it's Silver Era. First edition, worth for money. Come from Collects 10. Rock, Rocket Warrior, Joey played it. It was in the anime. Most anime cards like this would be worth money because people remember from the anime. Um, Rose Lover. Because it come from a gold set from back in the day before they start redoing how they do the gold now. It's actually okay. Um, Machine King. This come from something called Duelist, Duelist um, something for. And I remember there was a whole controversy behind this. And it people made it worth thousands of dollars. But it was like a lot going around. But yeah. That's what was going on with that. Um, trap, um, Dark Dimension Trap Hole. First edition. Uh, Cybernetic, Re Cybernetic Revolution, a great set from the Silver Era, worth a lot of money. And 
Dark Spirit of Silence, Lavender of Nightmare, first edition, one of the first few Yu-Gi-Oh! to Dual Monster Era come out. All right, and now, cards that I found and I was shocked by. These cards are what you would call Platinum Rare. They come from a one set called um, No Men of Night box that came out. And all these cards are Platinum Rare. You can see how they look. They're actually different. Let me take, take it out. It's, it's um sleeve. You can see that. That's Platinum Rare. And I got all these cards because they, they'll never be printed like this again. It's like a one of. Exclusive. Platinum Rare. Yep, Platinum Rare. Nice. Come on, focus. There you go. Yep, and those are my thought process of things like that be collecting or keep your eye open for. Um, I got to put my bond. When I get my other bond, I'm going to put all my, I'm going to put on a binder together and let you see like the gold rares and different type of cards in a binder. Because I have like two binders now. Well, I got like, well, let me rephrase that. It's like, <laughs> I got over maybe ten, five, ten, five thousand 5,000 cards in this house, so. And some stuff I got to, some stuff got to get sold. Some stuff got to, um, be resold. And I'll show you what I, what I was doing in my mind. I actually held on a lot of cards from, um, Rise of the Duelist, and they're worth a lot of money now. Like, this gold card from uh, Eternity Code is up in value. I held on two of these. These cards are almost getting close to $70. I got to get those sold. Um, Shadal Schism in the $40 range. Got two of those. They're getting sold. Um, I gotta get this sold. It's almost $100, it's $100 now. They're going up tomorrow. Getting a lot of stuff sold. Mm, that's my other barrel dragon. That's the one the bear still. No, I got I got a few of these. These are getting held on to for a while. Mm, this was the Dark Necrosphere. Yeah, Mal MC1, Master Collection 1. But Bounce Collection 2 is worth more. But I can't get my hands on any of those cards. So. I think that's it. Oh, Egyptian God's line going up in value now. It's almost $30. And Dark Magician Girl from the movie Secret Rare. Those cards are $20 a piece. Now they went up in value. I got a few of those. I got a lot of them. Um, what's how much what time is? All right, it's getting close. I need to end this video. All right, I'm in that video right here. I think that's everything. This like my thoughts in like different collection, like stuff you can hold on to, be worth money, but it's gonna be hard to get your hands on some of this stuff now. And I think like most most of all this stuff from the dual monster era, the original era, that I feel like that stuff is gonna run because I feel like it's in its early Yu Gi Oh is in its early stage of Pokemon, especially if now PSA. If PSA is having a problem, now you can't send any cards in unless you're paying 300 I, In order to get this graded, I'm going to have to pay $300. It ain't worth it. Unless your card is worth that. Worth the 300 um price tag that they, that they value cards at. Like, if I would get like if I get that Charizard card from the very Pokemon first came out, I got to pay $10,000 just to get that card graded. And that's hoping to get a 10 to sell it for $350,000. So, that's one headache. But... That's the one other thing with collecting cars. I'm in the video here. Y'all have a great day. Peace.